interior of a large hall with several benches, including one very long one. On the left side of the frame, a woman in her 40s with dark brown, thick and long hair, dressed in a beige jacket, white shirt and black trousers, probably black and white high heels on probably bare legs. In this film, the situation of the shoe hanging on one leg on the other prevails. More often, though not complete, contact with the foot is lost with the right footwear. Africa is slowly cracking. Scientists predict the formation of a new ocean. We are well aware that the continents on Earth are constantly moving, which is drastically manifested by, for example, earthquakes. Certainly, after hundreds of millions of years, it would be difficult for us to recognize the arrangement of continents on our planet. And these changes are happening even now. This applies, for example, to Africa, which, as researchers point out, is slowly falling apart. Scientists say that Africa is splitting in two, which will eventually lead to the formation of a new ocean. Although this process will take millions of years, scientists argue, it will separate what is now Somalia, parts of Kenya. Ethiopia and Tanzania from the rest of the continent. Observing the world around us and the continents existing on Earth, we should keep in mind that what we see, what the maps we use represent, is relatively new in relation to the entire time of the Earth's existence and has existed for a relatively short time. The Earth's surface is constantly changing. Only the human eye cannot see it directly, because it happens relatively slowly. Such processes take millions of years. It is not without reason that the Earth's continents are sometimes compared to pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Just look at their shape. For example, the west coast of Africa and the east coast of South America seem to go together very well. And this is due to the fact that millions of years ago they actually met in this very place. However, they separated about 138 million years ago. In the context of the movement of continents on Earth, something significant is already happening to Africa, which will irreversibly change its shape and appearance. Of great importance here is the Great Rift Valley, a tectonic trench that is part of the Great African Rift Valley. It runs through many countries, such as Ethiopia, Kenya, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, Zambia, Tanzania, Malawi and Mozambique. In 2018, the world circulated footage and photos showing a huge crack that occurred in Kenya. Already then there were voices that Africa was falling apart before our eyes. However, while this event was in fact related to the aforementioned rift system, a rift is a type of tectonic trench extending over long distances. It cannot be unequivocally considered as tangible evidence of the division of Africa. However, it is estimated that this rift has been involved in processes taking place in Africa for about 25 million years. On the other hand, tectonic movements taking place along the East African system caused the African plate to gradually split in two, and the Somali and Nubian plates gradually begin to move away from each other. It's a very slow process, the movement happens at the speed of millimeters per year. However, this means that Africa will be torn in two over the next millions of years, between which a new ocean will probably form.
it is estimated that these changes will take a more drastic form in about 5 to 10 million years. And it is during this period that a new body of water will most likely form. Research of Chernobyl Dogs Scientists have found genetic differences. Scientists studying the genomes of feral dogs living in the exclusion zone around the Chernobyl nuclear power plant have shown that there are significant genetic differences between two groups of quadrupeds living in different areas of the zone. Scientists hope that the knowledge gained in this way will contribute to a better understanding of the impact of long-term exposure to radiation on human genetics and health. The accident of the fourth reactor of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in 1986 caused the largest release of radioactive material into the environment in history. The impact of acute exposure to high doses of radiation was severe for the environment. However, more than three decades after the accident, Chernobyl has become a sanctuary for wild animals, which do not mind radiation, but the absence of human presence seems to favor them. A diverse range of endangered species, including bears, Wolves and lynxes find shelter here today. Ionizing radiation can damage the genetic material of living organisms and generate unwanted mutations. One of the most interesting research topics in the Chernobyl zone is an attempt to detect whether there are species that have adapted to live in such an environment. As with other pollutants, ionizing radiation strong selective factor, favoring organisms with mechanisms that increase their adaptability in areas contaminated with radioactive substances. So far, there have been no population genetic studies of large mammals inhabiting the exclusion zone. A group of scientists looked at the feral dogs, of which there are now about 800 in the zone. Although several days after the accident, rescue teams were looking for quadrupeds in order to eliminate them. At that time, it was argued that the dogs were certainly irradiated and posed a threat. After the Chernobyl explosion in 1986, as many as 300,000 people died. People were forced to leave their place of residence. Later, the so-called an exclusion zone that extends to a radius of 30 kilometers from the site of the destroyed reactor. This zone is uninhabitable. This state of affairs is largely due to the level of radiation and contamination of water and soil. After the disaster, various attempts were made to neutralize the threat chemically but they did not bring the intended results. All this creates an extremely toxic conglomerate in which it is difficult to survive. Yet there are animals that do. Among them are dogs. One group of which lives in the vicinity of the reactor itself, and the other in Chernobyl, about 15 kilometers away. Of course. The question arises as to what effect being in such an environment has on the genetic material. An attempt to study the genome of dogs living there has been made before. It was then noticed that the two groups mentioned above were different from each other. This time, it was possible to obtain as many as four times more samples for genetic research which allowed for an even more thorough analysis of the genomes living in the dog exclusion zone. The researchers identified as many as 391 regions in the canine genomes that differed between dogs living in these two locations. Interestingly, 
Some of them point to genes related to DNA repair processes in dogs exposed to such unfavorable conditions. It will now be crucial to understand how the genetic differences between these groups developed in the first place. Are we dealing here only with genetic drift? Or are these changes a response to the characteristics of the environment in which they live? By finding the answer to this question, we will be much closer to understanding how these dogs managed to survive there in the first place. It will also be possible to better understand how exposure to such harsh conditions can affect other living beings, including, of course, humans.